Light in the Darkness, a new theme for these meditations beginning this month of January and even extending up into February. Light, such a significant piece of our Christian faith, in particular our Catholic tradition, our Catholic faith. The Catholic Church uses the idea of light, Christ as our light, in so many different ways. We have the Nicene Creed, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. We have our hymns, our prayers, our liturgy, sacred scripture, even the way we use candles to, to signify the presence of our Lord in the tabernacle. Light is so imperative and so important in our Christian lives. This painting signifies the Garden of Eden. It's in one of our classrooms here in the Seton Center where our children come for catechesis. And one of the significant pieces of this is that light that's coming down from the heavens. God from God, light from light. Now, what about light? Well, light draws us in. It gives us hope. It gives us warmth. It helps us to see more clearly. And light travels in all directions, and we see it first because it has found us, not because we have found it. Think about the appearance of the Christmas star in the Christmas stories that we've just been reading and worshiping with. That beautiful star, that beautiful illuminated sky full of angels appearing to the shepherds to announce the birth of Christ. That light was overwhelming at some time. That light was so significant in the life of the church. It gives pause to think of how that light has opened our eyes and opened the eyes of millions of others since the time it first appeared in the sky at the birth of Jesus. Light illuminates our way. It's different from darkness. Darkness is simply the absence of light, and we'll talk more about that as well. But light illuminates our path. It guides our journey. It calls us home to where God intends for us to be. Now, that's not to say that darkness isn't important. Darkness is an integral part of being able to find the light because it is when we are truly in darkness when we cannot find our way, that we seek out that true light, that true light being Jesus Christ. Now, you might wonder why I'm standing here in front of a painting of the Garden of Eden. And it's to signify um, something that I'm going to be doing over these next few weeks. We know that Jesus was a rabbi, and Jesus had a wonderful way of connecting scripture it was actually a teaching technique that was used by most uh, rabbis at the time, and most likely still is. But they would connect the pieces of scripture in a way that made them be um, more understood and easily lived out because it made more sense in their lives. And that's what I'm hopefully going to do for you over the next few weeks. So I'd like to start with a piece of connection that has particular meaning for me. My favorite gospel to read is the Gospel of John. And of course, that's where we have our most significant piece of scripture in these recent weeks, where we read about um, the Word becoming flesh. And we read about the people in darkness. So let me start with the quote from Genesis and see if you can make that connection. In Genesis, a word was spoken and chaos was brought under control. We read from the first book of Genesis, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. And then moving on into the New Testament with the Gospel of John, the Word, the Light, Christ, 
is now going to enter into that chaos. God, the creator, is going to become part of his own creation. Darkness plays an integral role, a very significant piece in sharing the plan of God's love for all of us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Even those of us that are faithful Christians, faithful devout Catholics, faithful believers and followers and disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes allow that darkness to overcome us. And it is then that we most need the light of Christ in our lives. Over the next few weeks, that's where we're going to go. I'll give you some examples of Old Testament scripture and New Testament scripture and pose a few questions for you to ponder during those weeks that relate to them. The light shines in the darkness and cannot be overcome. Pray for me, I pray for you, and blessings from St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. <music>